hello guys welcome to solving solutions your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems it's nice having you in class again today how have you been um on today's video we are going to look at something very basic in surveying and what we are going to look at is um what we call um traverse um, traverse field book reduction yeah reduction of um, a traverse field book you know before now or let's say for some time we use them um, our optical instruments and um, the light was um, one of the instruments that we are using um, so often and when you use your the light for any traverse job you have your field book which you now use to get your horizontal angles your vertical angles your horizontal distances and then you later proceed to processing your data to acquire your coordinates right good so we also have um, videos on that on the channel we are going to leave the some of those videos the links to some of those videos um, on the description section of this particular video so um, if you are coming to the channel for the first time thanks for um, trying to look at our channel encourage us by subscribing and if you're a returning viewer, thanks for always um, checking up on us. Now, um, we have um, a field book here, um, a sketch of a field book here. We have the different columns. We have the station, the face, the site, the HCR, which um, means horizontal circle reading, then the horizontal angle. You will get to understand why the both of them are not the same. We have the vertical circle reading, the vertical angle, the slope distance, the what, the sketch or the diagram and the comment. The last two columns might not really be necessary, but they just need to be added there. Now, first thing is station. Station is actually where you are set up. You know, um, ideally, or let's say when you are using your tilde light, you need to set up somewhere. You back to somewhere and then you forward to another place, right? Good. So when you're starting, maybe when you're starting your tilde light traversing, you set up on a known point, you back to a known point, and then you forward to your peg one or your point one or to your new point. That is the, that is the routine. If you're using a material light, right? Good. So we have a set of three controls that has a control check for you to determine the included angle between those three points, right? Good. Or the included angle between those three points or the angle at the point where you set up. So these are some basic um, fundamentals you need to appreciate and also what understand. Then the next thing you have is your face. We have left, left, right, right, right? Which means when you want to start any tilde light traversing, your instrument must be on face left or your instrument should be on face left. Now, this is, um, should I call it a convention, but if you are so proficient and vast, you might decide to want to use any method that best fits whatever you want to do. However, for the purpose of learning, we need to state it out that this is how it is done or how it should be done, right? So you have left, left, right, right. That means your first observation is what? On face left. And then your second observation is also on face left. Okay, let's use this. This first station is mutilated. So let's use the second one, which is a bit clearer. Now, at point one, which is a station, you have what? Face left, face left. You have face right, face right. Is that not good? And now, if you look at the site, okay, let me just use site. Now, site is where you are observing to. Site is where you've directed your telescope to, right? Good. So that's what site means. So now, now, let's look at this. We have face left, face right. However, when you come to site, you see control one and point two, which means on the on the same face you are observing to two different sites that's another very important thing you need to understand these things are very simple you just need to understand them from the basic now what do i mean by that you have face left here you are observing to control one you are still on that face left you are now observing to point two that means you are going to turn that means you are going to turn your instrument towards two point two still on that particular face are we together this simply means that if you are now having two faces to um, same face to two station that means on the same station you are going to observe on two other faces too what does that mean now let us look at it this is control one this is control one right the first observation is on face left the second observation is on face right that's what i mean this is point two this is point two right that's the where you're observing to that's your site the first observation is on face left the second observation is on face right that means to any given point you observe to that point twice the two observations are not on the same faces. They are on what? On two faces. That means on face left and what? On face right. That's another very important fact you need to understand. Now, how do you know if the observation to those to that same point on the different faces are correct? You know, um, in our basic mathematics, um, we were taught that um, the difference between your backside and your foresight is actually what? 180 or angle on a straight line. Let's use that angle on a straight line is equal to what 180 so if you look at it very critically you will see that you are observing to control one 
from point one. So you're observing to yeah to control one from point one, and still on point one you are still observing to control one. However, in the two cases, the first case we are on face left, and the second case you are on face right, which means at one point or the other you would have transited the old, your your light to a different face. So transiting the tilde light to different face that actually means that you are actually observing on a straight line. And the angle, the difference in angle, I mean, let's say the angle on the straight line is what 180. That means the difference in observation you are going to have on those two instances, that means on face left and face right, should be equal to 180. However, practically, it's not always possible to, what, to get your 180. Therefore, your difference should be 180 plus or minus what the allowable error. Are we together or maybe the allowable misclosure or whatever the case is so this is another important fact you need to understand we are trying to lay this good foundation so that you would appreciate how we got these our data now i haven't established that you know sometimes when you are observing all these observations you see left left right right left left right right left left right right are actually observations on a single zero that means a set of observation so maybe when you want to establish controls or maybe when you are carrying out a more like more precise um, set of observations you are expected to observe on more than one zero that means as you have on control one yeah you would observe control one left left right right to okay let's come to point two you're on point two right you observe left left right right to control one point two point two and then control one then you observe this thing you repeat the same observation again on control one maybe you repeat it maybe two times three times four times as the case may be so that actually refines what your measurement that's what i mean least squares adjustment redundant um, observation that you now use probable value or whatever the case is but that's not the score for um, today's video however we are just trying to say that this set of observation this set of observation this set of observation you can see here uh, all of these observations are what are just a single what a single zero are we together so that's another thing you need to understand when we come to horizontal circle reading what does horizontal circle reading mean you saw horizontal circle reading and you also saw horizontal angle you would have asked the observation we have are they not horizontal angles no they are not you know uh, unless you are using um, a digital tube light like that displays your your angle your your circle readings you know you would have to look at your acts those graduated acts which have different um, list counts right some are 20 seconds some are 30 some are 10 some are 5 some are even up to 1 right good so you will have to read out your hcr from what those your graduated acts so it is those values you read out that you are now going to use to get what your horizontal angle and that is the essence of today's video and that's what the essence of today's video so let's say you've set up on a particular station same thing for your vcr your vertical circle reading same thing for your vertical circle reading. So it's the observation you see on your the vertical plane where the the on the arc you read them out, then you use them to uh, to get your vertical angle, which you will now use as a slope angle to correct your slope distance to now get what uh, your final horizontal distance, which is naturally on this field book. Now another thing to note is that your vertical circle readings or most times your vertical angles are observed to your forward stations. Good. Let me come back to this our site. Maybe in school, you might be seeing it as left, left, right, right, and then you see back, four, four, back, B, F, F, B. Now, the reason why we did not use B, F, F, B, yeah, is because our back side, we already know what it is. Our fore side, we know what it is. Our fore side, we know what it is, and our back side, we know what it is. So instead of saying back side, we give it a name. So maybe back side is what? Pillar 10. So we just put pillar 10. In this case, our back side is what? Control 1. Therefore, we use control 1. Our fore side is what? Point 2. Because from point 1, you are going to point 2. Is that not? That's what is simple. And then the next one is the fore side, because that is the order. Back, four, four, back. And if you look at it, as we told you earlier, on this same foresight, we are observing on two different faces, left and right. And the difference between these two faces must be or should be what 180 or 180 plus or minus the allowable what misclosure that you can what get in your observation. Good. So instead of putting back four four back, we use what instead of the back side, we use the city one, which is where we know to be as our back side, which is the control one. Then the next one is what our four side, which is what our point two, because we are on point one. Definitely we are going to point two. Then we repeat that back side again, but on a different face, right? Good. Then we now go back to our back side. And the first one was on face left. Now the last one will be what on face right. So what we wanted to explain about the VCR is that all your VCRs are measured on your foresight, 
or it's measured towards your foresight. Yeah, it's measured on your foresight because you need your vertical angle, which you now serve as your slope angle, to correct for your slope distances. So you don't really need the backside because the backside is just for validation of from where you are coming. So it's just like an orientation, yeah, from where you are coming. So it's the foresight that you need that will now take you. So it's the backside that takes you to the foresight, and it's the foresight you need the vertical angle for so that you now use the slope angle to, what, to determine your horizontal distance. So if you look at this VC arrow, you will not see any value at the top the first, um, the first row and then the last row. You only saw at the second and the third because the second and the third represents what our four size what readings. So this is another important thing you need to pay attention to. Now let's look at a typical um, data. Or let's say yeah, let's look at this data we have on our screen now. So we have um, our control one to point one, point one to point two, point two to point three, and we have um, point three to point four. Then we have point four to control three, and then we have what control three to control one. Good. This is another thing you also need to pay attention to. When you are using the total station, these things are actually different. However, we are using a tube light here, so you have to bring your mindset to that of what a tube light. Now, as you're using a tube light, you start from a known point and you close on a known point. By closing on a known point, is this from point one to control three? We've actually closed. However, we cannot determine the magnitude of error. Therefore, we are going to set on control 3 and forward to another known point. That is the essence of this last line. We need to set on what control 3 and what and forward to another known point. So setting on control 3 and forwarding to another known point, this actually gives you the measure to check for what the accuracy of what of your job. So this is another important thing you need to know whenever you're doing what, whenever you're carrying out to light traversing, that you start from a known point, which is what, as you can see here, we have our control one, from our control one to point one, right? Good, we've started from a known point. Then we have to close on a known point, which is from our point four to what, to our control three. However, we cannot just stop at this point. We need to still move from control three to another control because it is the bearing of that line. Let me just say that. It is the bearing of that line we will now use to check if actually what we have done is correct. So these are important stuff you need to know. The reason why we need we had to run through this is for the purpose of okay, you not just getting okay um left two minus um L two minus L one or maybe R two no that's not the essence of this video. We need to take you through the processes. Good now let's come to the reduction. Let's look at this our field book. Um this um first point is a bit mutilated so for clarity let's use this one but the values are correct. Now let's look at this our field book. You have left left try right, right you have um control one point two point two and what control one now for you to get the horizontal angle at this point good angles are measured at a point angles are what are measured at a point so that's also very important for you to note so for you to determine the angle at this point is actually this second one minus this first one that's why you can see the direction arrow is going towards the top and then this third minus this fourth you can see the arrow is going is coming down so when you do 191 six degrees five minutes minus 25 degrees 45 minutes 18 seconds you would have a value which is 165 then when you now do 11 degrees six minutes nine seconds minus 205 45 30 you have a value so you add those two values divide by two that means you find the values the the average is actually what your horizontal angle before we proceed let me explain something whenever you are trying to reduce whenever you subtract and then you find a negative answer or maybe a negative angle just like you definitely find that please you need a calculator you need a calculator by you for you to be able to appreciate what we are doing now so let's say you have 11 degrees 6 minutes 9 seconds minus 205 um 205 degrees for the 5 minutes 30 seconds that will definitely give you a negative value right i know you've pressed that on your calculator now good so when you have any negative value the way forward is just to what add 360 to it you don't need to know what quadrant it falls or whatever quadrant it does not fall the way forward is to what to add 360 to it that will now give you the actual angle you are going to use for your computation so this is actually a basic thing you also need to what you need to understand so whenever you're moving as you can see on our field book we have um, instances where we add a smaller number maybe subtracting a bigger number whenever we add that issue what we did was that or whenever we add that scenario, what we did was that we added what 360 to the negative um, value to the negative angle to now give us the corresponding positive angle which we use for what our computation or which we use for to continue the process. Are we together? Good. So how do you reduce? As we said earlier, we have our first L and our second L. We have our first R and our second R. So it's just what this second L minus this first L, right? 
and then this first arrow minus the second arrow that's why that's the direction of this arrow it means the subtraction is going up like this 191 minus 25 and then this subtraction is coming down like this 11 minus 205 so 11 minus 205 will definitely give you a negative value right good at 360 when you add 360 you are supposed to have something like 165 20 39 then you now add the both of them together it will now give you the average angle and that average angle is what your horizontal angle so that's the same approach you are going to use for what for all of them are we together now before we go let's look at the vertical circle reading now for the vertical circle reading as we said earlier you only need your vertical circle reading to your forward station now you know most times the angles are within 90 and 270 and the sum of the angles should be 360 just like um, when you are doing your horizontal circle, the, the difference between your back side and your first side should not be uh, more than or maybe plus or minus 180, right? Good. So same thing for your VCR. The sum of those two angles should be 360. Angle at a point, right? Good. However, it's not always um, practically, it's not possible. So sometimes you have um, 359, 59 something, or maybe 360, 00 something. So the little difference is actually the... The, the random error or maybe whatever error that I am entered will be crept into your data acquisition. So now, for you to be able to reduce your vertical circle reading to have your vertical angle, whenever it is on the 270 quadrant, that means you are having angles that are around 269, 270, 268, or 271. When it is like that, you subtract 270 from that. That means if it is bigger than 270. If it is less than 270, you say 270 minus that value. Same thing for your 90. If, nine, if it is bigger than 90, then it's what? That value minus 90. And if it's less than 90, it's what? 90 minus that value. Just like you can see here. This is bigger than 270, right? It's greater than 270, right? Good. So it's what? This value minus 270. And we have what? 0 degrees, 40 minutes, 38 seconds. Now, this value, this second value, 89, 45, 22, is less than 90. Therefore, we have what? 90 minus this. Now, this um, in Chodilla traversing at this stage, you don't really need um, the depression or the elevation otherwise if it was in tachymetry we need to pay attention to the sign so that we know that okay it's actually going up or it's coming down but we are just assuming that um, we don't need that um, depression or elevation that's why we don't pay attention to the sign so that's a disclaimer for this particular principle i just explained to you so when you now get your vertical angle they serve as your slope angle you use your slope angle to apply to your um, slope distance which you will now later use for what to get your horizontal distance and you continue with the process so um, we hope we have run through how you can carry out um, um, field book reduction not just field book reduction you have been able to learn um, by principle how these things are carried out why some of these things are done the way they are done and again we have actually processed this data you know days of little beginning when we are actually starting we've actually processed the data to acquire coordinates of 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 um, 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 right so we are going to leave the links to those videos on the description section of this particular video because this is supposed to have preceded yeah this is supposed to have come before those ones however it's coming way 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 after those um, those ones so you are going to see how some of those angles those um, horizontal angles were acquired then you now appreciate um, using this you now appreciate what those um, values we got so yeah thanks for coming to class please if you have any issue related to this maybe even not related just any issue that you feel you need assistance on you can always um, check the description section or the description of this video or the description section of our channel then you see contact links on how to reach out to us on whatsapp telegram send us a mail and then you can even send us a dm on um, what you call it on our facebook um, messenger because um, we have a page there so we would always be glad to get back to you as soon or maybe as fast as we can thanks for coming to class we hope we've provided solution to this particular surveying problem it's actually one of the basic parts of surveying we are going to see you on our next video until then keep being good at what you're doing and then um, have a nice time bye